Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think at the outset, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me here uh, for this wonderful IDEC program. Uh, and after the <coughs> past session, I think recently concluded session, I was present here also, uh, brainstorming session, I would say, with the recent advances and even the GLP-1 agonist. Uh, with the discussions, we are now going back to basics, maybe uh, uh, we are going to talk on modern issues and metformin in 2022. Really, they are relevant in today's practice because we have now more and more evidence with the new molecules like GLP-1, uh, DPP-1 inhibitors, HGLT-2 inhibitors. Still, there is a place or how they are now, right? So we'll see some evidences. So in next 10 to 20 minutes, I will uh, take you th through the few trials which are recent observational trials, some trials, and in short, I will also look at the pre uh, past data, which is uh, landmark trials in the metformin and SU combinations. So if you look at the evolution of diabetes treatment, how it evolved over the past uh, few decades, or maybe since the inception of the discovery of the insulin, then came the many oral antidiabetic agents, right from the metformin, we have now more and more data with the new molecules like DPP-4 inhibitors, HGLT-2 inhibitors, and as I as we just uh, witnessed how the GLP-1 agonist and with the oral semaglutide also now into the picture. So really now it is in a clinical practice they are evident. Uh, I mean re really relevant now also SUs plus metformin. All, as all clinician physician we have used this combination a lot. Still we are using, uh, but re how the data is. And if you look at the data, we actually believe in the evidence-based medicine and whatever molecule we are using in our clinical practice, we usually look in the, maybe the RCTs, we look for the greater studies. Uh, we again see for the real world evidences, we see our experiences in the clinical practice. And uh, now uh, as we have a lot of data with this metformin vessel, so we have newer and newer data also generating over a period of time and we are getting more insights. Yeah, so what are the reasons? So this sentence is very important. Metformin plus SU, modern SU, of course, they are still standing tall in the type two diabetes management. And what are the reasons? So if you look at the uh, most important reason, as I said, uh, clinical studies, evidences, they are huge. We have a lot of data. We have now our clinical experiences, real world studies are more. In clinical practice, we have seen, we have witnessed how these uh, drugs really act, right? And again, the most important, if you look at the clinical efficacy of any anti-diabetic agent, uh, if you compare, so if you look at the efficacies of uh, like HB1C reduction in terms of HB1C reduction, most of the OEDs, they have 0.5 to 1% of A1C reduction. Yes, insulin has no selling effect. It has the highest insulin uh, HB1C reducing capacity. But mind you, if you look at the SUs, SUs has the very high HB1C reducing capacity. They are the, one of the most clinically efficacy. If you look efficacy, it is the one of the most efficacious OAD. So when, whenever if you look for the glycemic efficacy, definitely SUs comes in a picture. Uh, also, uh, if you look at other OADs like like DPP or an SGL2, definitely we would say they are a moderate efficacy molecule. They are not as great as SUs. If you look at, again, whenever I am giving or you are giving out any molecule or drug to the patient, if we always look for the safety. So we have, these drugs has tremendously shown the safe, how safe they are in a long term of practice. So we are using for decades now, uh, maybe more than 30, 40 years. And also the flexibility of dose titration, because we have, like, like if you look at, take at the glimmy bread, it is from the 0.5 mg to 1 mg to 2 mg to like that. So we have, we can titrate the dose, we can do the fine tuning. Feasibility of the co-prescription with other anti-diabetic agent, that is also can be done, we can use with, along with insulin as well. Cardiovascular safety, this was a must talked about, uh, maybe the SUs, but also again now the newer SUs has shown they have uh, cardiovascular safety as well, and we can use confidently, right? Again, uh, uh, <coughs> relatively with the novel DPP inhibitors. 
And of course, most important, I think in the Indian setting, if you look at the cost, they are most easily available, most affordable drugs still. And I would, I think it is one of the most prescribed drug, maybe the first line in most of our practice at present also. So I think in sh brief, I will take you to the, through some trials. So these are the CV safety trials with modern issues. Uh, they were done. We all know how Wikipedia's, uh, most of the learning of diabetes we got from the Wikipedia study. We have advanced uh, study 2008, then TOSCA IT trial in 2017, START and START just study. I will take you to the VIP and Carolina. So these are the some snapshots how these uh, trials uh, in TOSCA IT trial, actually the metformin, uh, I mean patient were on baseline metformin and they were given pyoglutazone and sulfonylureas and there were similar incidences of this cardiovascular events in uh, SUs as compared to the plyoglutazone. In also Wikipedia's trial, they, what they have shown that there is no difference in the rates of myocardial infarction of diabetes related death when you are using SUs and insulin. This was a study which was uh, known as START study where what they have shown that it is, they have compared the glimepiride with the cetagliptin uh, and uh, patient were already on the metformin and uh, if you look at the efficacy as I told like these newer drugs they are moderate efficacy agents. So even a low dose glimepiride has better glycemic control. You can see in these two bars. Uh, HB1C reduction is 0.42% to 0.33% and p-value is significant. So you can see in the second graph as well, there is a significant reduction in the fasting plasma and PPG levels also. This was actually a Japanese uh, patient study, START-J trial, where they have seen this uh, compar comparable efficacy with the glimepiride and the cetagliptin in Japanese patient when patients were more than 60 years old and where also they have seen it is more efficacious. Uh, we also know how the Carolina uh, trial, which was a landmark trial uh, where we have seen the lenagliptin and SUs, how they are uh, cardio safe and they compared uh, in this, you can see the durability of the glycemic control and the CV safety and uh, time to the first occurrence of the MACE, 3 p MACE and 4 p MACE. So it is also similar and comparable to lenagliptin. So it's not like, uh, uh, according to though we know how the, it is cost effective, at a lower cost we can get the same CV benefit. So as we now, I will take you through the new modern evidences, a uh, new few modern studies or recent evidences what we have in a recent, uh, recent. so these are the few studies uh, which was done in the recent uh, trials and uh, studies, some observational studies, some are uh, retrospective studies. So this was what ADA says. ADA says with the type 2 diabetes, the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So ADA recommends the second generation SUs in the uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease with heart failure and the DKD. And uh, what, what was most talked about that these uh, SUs, they actually cause the interfere with the ischemic preconditioning, okay? And that's why they are not CV safe. This was a, a hypothesis, but now modern issues, they have very low affinity for these mitochondrial K type of ATP channels, and that's why they does not interfere with uh, these channels, and there is uh, less ischemic preconditioning, and thus they are CV safe. So this was an observational study, a recent study. What uh, they have done, they have seen the glimepiride metformin fixed dose combination in the young individuals with type 2 diabetes. This was an Indian experience. And they have shown that almost 1.54% uh, uh, was the HB1C reduction between the two arms. That was before treatment and after treatment. On also uh, young patients with almost 86% 80 patients of the young diabetes, they demonstrated good, excellent safety and tolerability. So uh, this is uh, <coughs> one study. Then another study where what they have seen, they have seen this fixed dose combination in type 2 diabetes patient with cardiovascular disease risk or a patient who had at risk of CVD. This is also an Indian setting. And in this, they have 686 patients. Uh, that was the sample size. Uh, HB1C reduction shown was 1.1%. 93% physicians, they reported good or excellent efficacy. Uh, and tolerability also, uh, uh, it was a good in this study. 
This was the one more study where they studied modern SU with metformin, FDC in obese, overweight individual also. Uh, and more than 80% patient, they received glimepiride plus metformin as a first line of therapy. There was mean reduction of A1C was 1.3%, 9 out of 10 patients showed weight neutrality. So this is also one of the most talked topic about the issues that they are, they cause a lot of weight gain and uh, we should not use these drugs for, uh, I mean, uh, or many drug, other newer drugs are preferred because of they are not, they are causing weight gain. But again, in this study also shown, there is very less weight gain or almost they are weight neutral. So this was a, another study where the metformin glamipride combination FDC co-prescription with insulin. So in this study, they, they, uh, they studied with the insulin co-prescription and they found that when I, when I, whenever you are using this FDC along with insulin, there is decrease in the insulin doses, there is less weight gain and also uh, better tolerability. So again, these are the same results of the same study where we can see there is 1.33% of the pre-treatment to post-treatment A1C reduction. And uh, also other drugs, how the reduction in the other drugs also happened, like DP prohibitors, 23% reduction, SGLT to 12.9% reduction. So requirement of the other OAD is also reduced when you are using uh, with the insulin. See, this is the uh, almost, uh, next study where they compared insulin treatment versus glimepiride on the background of metformin. So these patients, they're already on the metformin. And one group, they have given insulin. Another group, they have given glimepiride. And uh, there, what they have shown that metformin therapy had a higher risk of all-cause mor mortality when you are using with the glimepiride. Again, this was a study. This was also reported uh, observational study. and. Uh, they have studied how this modern issues with FDC is a metformin with FDC is a really a safe prescription in the all subgroups. And more than 80% of the diabetes experts agreed that this is a safe prescription ac across the ages and in all types of hyperglycemia. So, I think I am at the uh, end of the talk. There are a few slides. So this is the most, most talked about. What we really fear as in a clinical practice, SU induced hypoglycemia. Really is this hyped? or not, so that's why this study was done. And what they had looked at, this was the AGP study, ambulatory glucose profiling they have done with the 300 of the patient with retrospective analysis. And their HVNC were around between seven to eight, they were on SUs. And if you look at this pattern in this SGP, their target range they have set, and you can see there is very, very less chance of hypoglycemia. We'll see the figures also. And what they have found that no hypoglycemia in 74% of the patient as per AGP data. Data. I mean, the patient were on SUs, the patient's HbA1c was not very high, they were on the, that borderline range. Still, hypoglycemia is only in, uh, not, no hypoglycemia in seven, uh, 74%, only 26% had very, very mild hypoglycemia, what is called as grade 1, and 5% as uh, the time below range, what the concept in now CGM we use, that is 5% and 2% had uh, hypoglycemia in TBR more than 5%. So the hypoglycemia risk is very less. If you use judicious, definitely we need to use maybe in a low doses, we need to start with the low doses, and we need to see how uh, patient glycemic control, his other comorbidities, like his CKD status, all these things need to be keep in mind, uh, then definitely we can avoid these hypoglycemias. Also, this was a, one more study for hypoglycemia risk, which was done in the sub-Saharan African setting. And uh, they compared SU with the insulin therapy. And here also they have seen that there is uh, clinical significant hypoglycemia is very, very less frequent when you are using SUs. Uh, and the modest excess occurs predominantly those with tight glycemic control. So we know when we are going for a very tight glycemic control, then there may, a uh, uh, patient may go into hypoglycemia, definitely. But, uh, that is the only thing where we need to be cautious. So this was a position of sulfonylurea in the current era. Uh, this was a review of national and international guidelines uh, made by Dr. V. Monser. So what they have said in this uh, positional statement, they say the modern issues, like not the previous one, like libinclamide and all. So glimepiride and glycolazide MR can be preferred as a second line agents when glycemic controls are not achieved or reach with metformin menopotherapy. So it still has a place. 
Uh, sulfonylureas can be used along with all classes of oral OHs. Second generation SUs can be used as a third line agent with dual combination therapy for the management of uncontrolled diabetes. They are safer than the older SUs definitely. Then we need to titrate properly and uh, instead of going for the uh, high dose or maximum dose of metformin, we can combine. So we have studies when we combine early combination therapy, we have more durable effects. Right, so we can combine, we should not go for a very high or ceiling dose of metformin. And combination containing second generation SUs as recommended in elderly patients, well, also we can give, but definitely with caution with low doses. So what recent guidelines also says, uh, this is a South Asian Federation of Endocrine Society guidelines, SAFE's consensus statement. They also say say modern SUs should be preferred over the conventional SUs. They reduce mortality, all cause mortality, CV mortality, better CV outcomes, and they should be proper papered over the conventional SUs. So what, where they are present, at present, where they are placed nowadays in Indian and abroad, really in a clinical practice, really how many percent of patients they are using. So people are using doctors, 54 percent of the patients in India, they are still on these drugs. 41 to 45 percent in UK still they are using, and even 31 percent uh, uh, in the USA also they are using. So it is still there. Uh, it's not like uh, SUs are now done and dusted. So definitely there is a place for SUs and uh, metformin. Of course, it is a first line or it will never go. But SUs still they are there. And in country like India, I think it will definitely remain. It has its own advantages, own benefits. Uh, in spite of now we have many new molecules. So in nutshell, what I want to tell that modern SUs is here to stay. So we are again to back to our first statement. Uh, they are still standing tall in the clinical practice they are there because it, in addition to their availability and affordability yes of course this is most important thing but also they offer the robust and durable glycemic control they also have demonstrated a lot of safety data we have cv safety they are we can use in across all age group of patients and even comorbidities uh, and also across all stages of diabetes thank you very much for the kind attention